Special attention on Nosa Joyce Fabio Nosso. Also join the family of Ricardo Major. Ricardo Major, whose funeral was last Wednesday, that we may accompany her with our prayers so that she rests peacefully in the arms of the Lord. Together with our different intentions, we now begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Almighty, ever living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your people and bestow your peace on our times. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Lord, for your servant is listening. A reading from the book, the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me? But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son, go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
bodies are members of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immortality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. <clears throat> Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immortality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. according to John. John was standing with the two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They answered, they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had joined and followed Jesus. He first found his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I just want to draw your attention to the psalm that we have just sung. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And as we begin contemplating on those words, allow me to share my sympathy and condolence to the family of Ricard Major that they have just lost, whose funeral was last Wednesday. 
I am sure during her time, she endeavored to do God's will. But as human beings, we respond to God's will with all our human weaknesses, giving us a reason to pray for her during this Mass. As we reflect on the same psalm, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. The readings today challenge our listening ability in our various callings so that we do not do our own wills, but we do the will of the one who calls us. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The first reading and the gospel are an example of an attentive listening to a spiritual direction. Through the guidance of Eli, Samuel recognized God's voice. And through the guidance of John the Baptist, his disciples recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God, the long awaited Messiah. God can call anyone he wishes at any time. But he will not make that person an instrument he wishes for his mission overnight. He doesn't. And that's why even called to the priesthood, you have to go through all the formation process. Because God has to form you in the instrument he wants with the time. He takes his time working in the background, usually through mediators, to form you in the instrument that he wants. Take the case of Samuel, the only son of Anna who had been unable to bear a child for her husband for many, many, many years. And has had, she had suffered insults from her poor wife. God intervened and listened to her repeated cries and she gave birth to some. And in gratitude, she gave her only son back to God. By giving him back to Eli, to raise him for God's service. And so, Samuel grew up in the house of God, but in the hands of, you call it him, Eli, but we call him, the, the pronunciation is Eli. Careless of how you call it, either Eli or Eli is the same person. The priest who was very vital in his divine call, as evidenced in today's first reading. Three times Samuel did not know that it was God calling him. But he thought it was Eli or Eli the priest, his teacher, who was calling him. Only after consulting with a line, the Samuel realized that it was God calling him, showing us how much Samuel needed the help of a line in his, in his discernment process. He told him, go and sleep. And if you are called, Reply and speak, Lord, reply, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The same with Andrew and Peter. God used people to prepare them for their own calling. They were followers of John the Baptist, and they had heard everything. John the Baptist had taught them about 
they may say about the need to prepare the way for the Lord, about the kingdom of God that was at hand. They had even undergone the baptism of John the Baptist of repentance as a sign of converting or preparing life of righteousness as they awaited for the coming of the Messiah. And then in today's gospel, John literally pointed Jesus out to them, saying, Behold the Lamb of God. In other words, saying, Guys, the man that I've been telling you about is right there. Go to him. Jesus, on seeing the two disciples of John following him and wanting to affirm their intention, he asked them, Guys, what are you looking for? And they responded, Rabbi, where are you staying? As their way of saying, we want to hang out with you. Jesus recognized that they were not novices, but men who God had already touched and set on the journey of searching. So by calling them to become his disciples, Jesus was only continuing a journey that God had already begun in them long before. Even in our time, the Lord continues to call his people. There's the best call for all of us to be faithful disciples. And within this wider Christian call, each one of us is called a specific vocation such as priesthood, religious life, marriage life, or single life. How do we build from the remote or initial preparations in our various callings? It does not matter the initial attraction. We must grow into a mature, responsible relationship, be it in religious life, be it in marriage life or single life. The initial attraction is just an eye open for you and me to enter and explore the treasures hidden in our own individual callings. For instance, at one time, I assisted in the Office of Vocation Promotion of our order and I was privileged to listen to the young men aspiring to join religious life. Most of whom the attractions join, religious life was quite different from the real essence of priesthood. And the same could be said of marriage and single life. The attraction to marry this man or this woman may not necessarily be the real essence of what marriage is. They wanted to join priesthood just because they thought priests had plenty of time to enjoy. To them, mass was the only responsibility, and after the celebration of the mass, nothing more. And I think maybe most of you think like that. That now, Father, after doing his mass obligation, what more? He has all the time to enjoy. How do we help those around us to faithfully discern and respond to their different callings? Can we be that ally to the Samuels around us seeking discernment? Or John the Baptist to point to the Andrews around us 
to their true treasures or Andrew to the Simeons who need to be brought to God more so in this time of darkness where the church has become the source of fear for coronavirus. In other words, do we encourage our fellow parishioners in pursuing their various vocations? Take the case of encountering a young couple, maybe dating, or a newly married couple facing some challenges. Do you encourage them in their commitment, giving them some advice from your own experience? Have you been a lie, John the Baptist, or Andrew, to others outside your family, more so during this time of crisis? The readings are a reminder to each one of us in our duty to discipleship. For instance, John the Baptist pointed out the Lamb of God to his own disciples. Likewise, Samuel discerned the divine vocation through the guidance and his fidelity to Eli's instructions. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. How much guidance do, do we offer or do we take in when people give us direction to open us to different options or different possibilities? St. Paul in the second reading reminds us that as a body of Christ, we need God's Spirit to hold us together. Unfortunately, much as we are members of Christ's body and the temples of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit in us is often suffocated by our inability to listen to God who speaks to us through different mediators that God puts into our lives. Some will listen to an outer voice without ignoring his mediator who led him to discern the divine call. Maybe. We may need to ask ourselves, in our daily many voices, do we spare some time to listen and such a sense of spiritual direction to discern God's spirit in those many voices around us? There's no we can hear the Lord who speaks to us unless we create an atmosphere for it. Listening to him in our own different experiences. Like this experience of loss. At times even in experiences like this, of the loss of our dear one becomes an opportunity for me to at least sit down and I pray. Not only praying for your mom, but also praying for myself. How much do I listen? Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. How much do I endeavor to do God's will? Our different experiences. And maybe we could also listen to him speak, speak to us not only through our mediators, through his word. How does the word of God challenge me? That after listening to the word of God, I sit there by myself and I say, well, I think some of this pointed to something that I need to address. But that create needs when we create, that's only possible when we create an atmosphere for that. The sacraments that are done with that in interior science. My dear brothers and sisters, the phrase Lamb of God that we hear at every Eucharistic celebration, like Andrew and other, the other disciples of John, points to the mission 
of every baptized into the body of Christ that you and me belong to proclaim our faith in Christ so that, so that others may follow him. But the best proclamation is through our own actions and not just by words. We can become very good preachers if our lives are a living gospel that others can admire and begin saying, but why does this person act like this? And the conclusion comes because he is a Christian. This is our ongoing mission as a people who have been purchased by the, lamb, by the blood of the Lamb to bring others to Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's try to challenge ourselves. What efforts are we making to bring those who are tormented by the fears of the coronavirus back to church? Because this is the hardest task, or one of the hardest tasks that the church is facing today that calls for our joint efforts not to lose our brothers and sisters just because of the invisible enemy, the coronavirus. The Lord be with you. I believe in one God. Begotten not man, consubstantial with God, through him all things made, for us men and for our salvation, even God and God. And by the Holy Spirit, for the kind of divine Mary, Amen. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come to end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the Maker of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will be the Father and the Son of the Father, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and look forward for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We now humble ourselves and offer our prayers to you. Our response is, Loving Father, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For the church, that like Andrew, who stayed in the Lord, and then invited his brother as well, we who have found our home in the Lord may go forth and bear witness to others. We pray to the Lord. For our leaders who have responded to the call to serve others in public office, that they may work humbly and tirelessly to serve a common good, we pray to the Lord. That all our citizens may work to hasten the day when this country truly lives out the ideals for which Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. fought and gave his life, we pray to the Lord. That during the week of prayer for Christian unity, which begins tomorrow, all Christians may be inspired to find solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling to hear the Lord's voice in their lives or understand the nature of their call, we pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. For all who are in need of prayers, those that are in hospitals, those in nursing homes, those confined to their own homes, 
that through our prayers they may feel united with this community of faith and that the Lord will touch and heal them. We pray to the Lord. Amen. In the silence of our hearts, we can add our own intentions. And for the character, vision, that she may raise in peace, we pray to the Lord. For ourselves and all those in need of our prayers, that the prayers we hold in our hearts will be united to those of our patrons, Saints Philip and James, and all who stand before the throne of the Lamb, we pray to the Lord. Lord we ask for the for Christ our Lord. Amen. We may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever a memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through right and just our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the death effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we now hope for the everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we are created.
you are indeed good for the Lord. For holiness, make for the day of all these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for us, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The Minister of Faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them with the light of your face. Our mercy on us, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit you before heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Lord's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take our the sins of the world, and our sins. Lamb of God, take our the sins of the world, and our sins. Lamb of God, For the Lamb of God, for him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Pour on us, Lord, the spirit of your love. And in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The announcements. The second collection being taken up at all the Masses today is the St. Vincent de Paul collection. Please be as generous as your means can allow. We mail the statement and annual summaries to each of our parishioners. If there are any questions, you are most welcome to cross-check with the parish, sec parish secretary at any time during office hours. The purpose is an appreciation for your generous contributions without which our family of faith cannot run. Then an assessment on your part as to whether all your contributions have been posted in our system. And finally, it may serve for your tax return purposes in case you needed one. Once again, thank you so much for your generous support. As part of our outreach to our dear brothers and sisters, let us continue encouraging our parishioners who are consumed with fear to come back so we together can give thanks to our God, even in the midst of all the storms we face. God bless you and stay safe. Before the final blessing, I respected the intention or the request of Anastasia and John, who told me that it was the birthday of their dad and mom, and instructed me to wait when both of them are here. Then we can sing for both of them. And they told me it does not matter, even if up to next year, you have to wait. And I waited. So since both of both of them are here, we are going to sing a happy birthday for both of them. Come forward. Happy birthday to you. And finally, just as a challenge that comes from today's teaching or reminder, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Speak, Lord, your, your servant is listening. God speaks to us every day. It could be moments of joy. It also could be moments of sorrow. 
I remember on Wednesday when the family came here asking if I would join them in prayer because their dear one, their mom, was being buried in Mexico. I hesitated and I set up a commitment because I was preparing for a meeting. But I say, wait a minute. What is the Lord challenging me in this situation? Can I listen to him? Supposing one time I go there and he tells me or asks me, you remember when I sent the people who were grieving and you never identified with them? I had to listen. But maybe the same challenge should go across to you as a family. What is the Lord speaking to you? So now, what a beauty that the church could identify with us at that time of loss. How much we identify with the church in moments when we are not and all these opportunities are an invitation to us to respond to God's will in our everyday experiences. To know that we are on the journey and the judge as our mother can always embrace us in both moments of sorrow and moments of joy. May she rescue us. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, Lord.